Hello class and welcome to the third lecture in our systematics class, Micro Taxonomy. This is your teacher, Ma'am Ethel Ruth. So before we begin, let's look into the different topics that we will be uh, discussing in this chapter. So for this chapter, we are looking into the species category and species taxon. Under this topic, we will look at the species concept, the issues in application of the species concept, and the mechanisms towards speciation. So for this topic, you are expected to be able to discuss what a species is and argue the validity of a species. Yeah. The next one we're looking into is speciation. For speciation, we will look at allopatry, sympatry. And here, we have to be able to discuss the process of speciation and differentiate the different types of speciation. Next is variation. For variation, we have the genetic and the non-genetic types of or levels of variation. And the fourth is about infraspecies and polytypic species. So here, you should be able to discuss infraspecies and the related concepts here and contrast among infraspecific categories. Okay? So here, we're looking at the significance of polytypic species and the categories of infra-species. So, now that that is clear, let us go to the main topic of this discussion. So today, we're going to look at two main topics. You have your species concept and the mechanisms toward speciation. But first, we have to look at taxonomy. Or what is this microtaxonomy that we're talking about? So we now look into the recap of our past lesson, the first part. And here, we're going to see again this slide or this picture okay so diba we try to recall the three pillars under systematics we have your taxonomy which includes your nomenclature and classification so that's basically taxonomy it differs from systematics in that while taxonomy is concerned with your nomenclature okay that means descriptions, okay, or describing and naming new taxa, classification as well, or arranging these new taxa or this uh, taxa into an organized system, okay. Systematics, on the other hand, it deals not just with taxonomy or arranging biodiversity into a classification system, but it looks into why and how this diversity evolved. Okay, so just a recap. Okay, additionally, systematics also tries to estimate kung gaano ka close or the level or degree of relatedness, okay, how closely related organisms are for us to determine important traits or characters and how these evolved. Okay, so again, how it differs from taxonomy is that systematics consists of the, these three pillars. Okay, you have your not just nomenclature and classification, it also looks into evolution and phylogeny. Okay, so you may try to ask why is taxonomy? that important so why is taxonomy that important
So according to Mora and colleagues, this study was done in 2011. They say that we have an estimate of 3 to 100 million species on Earth. Okay? Ang laki nung difference ng 3 to 100 million. Diba? That's the kind of uncertainty that we have even in our estimates. But what we only are able or have been able to describe is just 8.7 million. So, say we do have 100 million species, wala pa sa 1% ang nade-describe natin. And why is this so important? Bakit ba ganito ka-importante yung gap na yun? So, this is important because it is the only rational, okay, and scientific approach to this biodiversity crisis, okay? How so? Bakit naman po, ma'am? Bakit naman taxonomy ang rational approach to it? If we remember, if we remember, di ba, sa isang ecosystem, these species work in community with other species and together with the abiotic factors there, di ba? Kasi they are biotic factors. So, the species are the biotic factors and they work in community with other species together with the abiotic factors. Now, each of them play a specific part and a specific role in the food web, okay? And of course, in the cycling of energy, diba? Yun yung napag-aralan natin noon. Or maybe this time, we're going also to uh, learn that. And now, since each of them has this specific role. Pag may isang nawala, parang sa clock, kumbaga, di ba? Pag may nawala na part niya lang, hindi na siya makagana kahit na meron siyang energy going around, kahit meron siyang battery. Pag may isang part lang na nawala, na alis, hindi na siya gagana ng maayos. And that is the same with our ecosystem. With our biosphere, di ba? Hindi makakagana ng maayos. And we are losing, sadly, we are losing more than we know. Okay? So, nawawala na sila isa-isa, hindi pa natin sila kilala. Ganun siya katindi. What's more is that meron pa tong sort of divide among developed and developing countries. So, Developed countries are your first world, world countries, and you have your developing countries, which we are part of, the third world countries. Now, what happened is these developed countries, or basically the colonizers, diba? they have the available technology, okay? They have the available resources to conduct extensive biodiversity studies. While tayo, na developing countries na first uh, sorry while tayo na developing countries na third world country ay nasa atin yung mga gusto nilang pag-aralan kasi very rich ang ating biodiversity so basically yung gusto nilang pag-aralan nasa atin tayo hindi tayo makapag-aral ng maayos ng ating uh, environment dahil nandun naman yung advancement ng technology. Okay? So, may ganun pa tayong um, divide or may ganun pang existing na situation in the research community. So, we uh, now look at how taxonomy is done. You might be wondering, ma'am, ano po ba tong biodiversity studies na sinasabi nyo? Paano ba gumawa ng taxonomical studies? Yan. So, taxonomical studies are done through several steps. Dun sa uh, PDF na binigay for the second lecture, it concentrated on collection for taxonomical studies. But today, we're going to look at each step in creating or making 
a taxonomical study. And this is the overview of what we're going to talk about, okay? But before that, we have to look at So the steps in taxo So the steps in taxonomy include your microtaxonomy and macrotaxonomy. This is a general description of what takes place. For your microtaxonomy, it only deals with uh, the species, okay? The demarcation of a species. Ano ba yung what makes a species? Ano ba ang species, okay? While your macrotaxonomy this looks at the classification or how are we going to classify all these organisms and to categorize the steps involved in a taxonomical study we have your alpha your beta and your gamma taxonomy okay so the steps that we will look at later these are integrated in our alpha taxonomy. So alpha taxonomy are these procedures that we make or that we do for the recognition and description only okay, of species. So that's the first step of classification. For your beta taxonomy, these are procedures done to be able to classify the species in a hierarchical system. Okay? And finally, your gamma taxonomy also looks at or involves these procedures that now look at the evolutionary factors okay so now let's try to look at the alpha taxonomy so the steps here involve your selection your background check or your background collection of samples and then storage of course and then producing a key and then verification so to understand it more, let me show the slide for that. So first, we look at selection. For our selection, syempre, kailangan natin mag-select ng mga groups na may economic and health benefits or importance. Kailangan significant siya sa atin. Okay? So if you remember or if you looked into the video in YouTube that looks at uh, our journey as a country in the field of taxonomy, diba? doon, binibigay niya yung kwento ng Philippines or ng bansa natin in terms of how we looked at medicinal plants. So doon, tinatry niyang negate yung fact na hindi tayo civilized. Kasi ganun tayo tinignan ng mga colonizers dati. Which is not true. Because, sabi niya, yung knowledge natin about medicinal plants is based on empirical knowledge. Ibig sabihin, dahil based siya sa experience natin. So, we use and we know the plants that can be used to heal us. So, there also, dun sa um, YouTube video na yon, they also look at the current uh, studies, researches done that is related to this. Okay, so we have there your DOST to Class Lunas, which I am also a part of before as a research associate. Yan. So, basically, in this selection step, we look at those with economic or medicinal benefits to study on. Next, we have background or literature. Siyempre, kailangan natin ng background check. Oo, diba? So, we have to look into the literature available. Okay, you have there your journals, your articles, to be able to guide us on what is already known about that uh, group or that plant group or that uh, animal group that we would like to work on. This also, this background step 
also involves contacting uh, experts in the field or yun pat katulad nung sa YouTube natin na Natural History Museum okay at UPLB okay so you can contact uh, curators there and experts there okay and we can also join online interest groups diba so there are existing interest groups believe it or not that uh try to cultivate this research uh, field okay you have there your taxacom okay uh there is also that what we call bugnet so hindi siya bugnet <laughs> b u g n e t ayan so it's all about insects naman ayan so after that we also look at collection so dito tinitignan natin yung technique securing a permit of course and it has significance in identification okay so diba katulad nung uh, nasa pdf ng lecture 2 okay so it is very important to make collections okay why well of course first is Okay, this is um it is also related to a recent uh exploration or a recent uh study that we made that I was a part of. Ayan. So one reason that we need to collect is the available specimens do not uh adequately cover the suspected ge geographic range of the certain species. What does this mean? For example, you have your Ardisha, okay? So, um, I was part of this uh, sort of hike in Bokod recently, and we looked at Ardisha, and we were surprised to see that kahit nasa elevation na kami ng around 1,800 plus, meron pa nakikitang Ardisha. And literature, in literature, nasa 1,000 plus lang siya. Like, nasa uh, lowlands lang siya most of the time. And this one, we are already reaching 2,000 meters above sea level. And we can still see the Ardisha. So, baka yung mga specimens na available, hindi pa niya nakocover yung full geographic range. So, we have to look at uh, doing collections, okay? Or possibly, the number of available specimens is not adequate or hindi siya sapat para um, sagutin yung research question natin or yung research problem natin. And so, we try to do a collection. So, remember dun sa collection, meron yung word na permit. We have to secure a permit. Kailangan ay legal yung pangongolekta natin kasi paano kung endangered na pala siya paano kung kokonti na lang siya di ba so that is why we need also to secure a permit for it now let's look at the next step which is storage ayan after collection we have storage and in this storage we now try to get voucher specimens Okay. So, these voucher specimens is a proof that that species is existing. Okay, so we have to deposit this in, a, in an institution. So, an example of that is our herbarium. So, meron tayong herbarium dito. Dun natin ilalagay yung mismong specimen, what it actually looks like. Now, we have to remember that we have two Label these carefully, okay? Include the country, kung saan yun nakuha, uh, yung province, okay? Yung latitude and longitude, lalo na. And the collector's name, uh, the altitude as well, okay? Yan. So, you have to label these carefully so that kapag i-verify siya, pwedeng pwede nilang puntahan yung location. And we also have to look 
at the storage requirements, di ba? So, ipepress ba natin yan? If we freeze, isusok sa ethanol. Okay, so, we have to store this well. We have to look at the storage requirements for others who are who will be interested in our study okay yan and then we also have to produce a key okay so again diba ang key this is a set of characters okay now not only should we produce a key but we have to make it available ayan so kailangan pwede siyang makuha ng different experts so that they will they will be able to try or to check their type specimens okay yung mga existing ng specimens ito try nila kung uh, tama ba yung key na nagawa mo okay and lastly you have verification so syempre kailangan ma-verify through a- an expert's eye okay ma-verify through an expert's eye na Tong specimens na to ay talagang novel. Okay? So, there is no way but to compare. Okay? So, dito, kailangan mo na ng expert sa field. Ayan. So, now, we are sort of familiar of a taxonomical study under alpha taxonomy. Okay? So, these um, steps are only for uh, the description and for the classification of a certain species. So now, we go to our main topic okay, for today, which is ayan. So the main topic that we're going to look at today is on the species concept. Okay? So, we will uh, look at different species concepts. We will try to describe what a species is. And surely, at the end of this lecture, you should be able to discuss what a species is and argue the validity of a species. So, para sa inyo ba, ano ang species? So, what is a species? So, again, ayan, to reiterate, ang species po ay pwedeng singular and plural, okay? So, according to the American Heritage Dictionary, it is a group of closely related organisms that are very similar to each other, sorry about that misspelled word, and are usually capable of interbreeding and producing fertile offspring. Okay. Take note of the fertile offspring. Dapat yung offspring nila makakapag uh, bigay din ng offspring para maituloy-tuloy yung generation. Okay? Maituloy-tuloy yung existing population. But then, throughout the years, there have been and there still is this debate about what a species truly is okay so let's look at the different and notable definitions from renowned taxonomists and philosophers as well as scientists in the field so here we look at ayan so different uh, definitions of a species yan so, I would like to highlight what John Ray said. Ayan, true breeding. Species involves true breeding. And variations are accidents. What did he mean? Ano ba yung context neto? So, sabi niya, No matter what variations that occur in that given population, in those species, if they spring up or pagmula sila sa seed ng, is- ng parehong plant, these are just accidental variations, okay? And they do not distinguish a species permanently, okay? So, for example, ako, 
uh, kulot yung buhok ko, pero si mami, straight. So these are just accidental variations daw. And they do not uh, distinguish a species permanently. So, sabi niya also, one species never springs from the seed of another or vice versa. So, wala kang makikita daw na species na nagmula sa hindi niya kapareho. Okay? We can also look at other definitions. Yan. So, for Linnaeus, diba, very religious talaga. So, he looks at species as creation. And then, for Darwin naman, he looks at them at, as a set of individuals closely resembling each other and that it does not essentially differ from the term variety. So, Let's look at these two scientists, Linnaeus and C. Darwin. So, si Linnaeus, he used the sexual system or the natural system, di ba? Kasi nag-concentrate siya sa flowers, okay? And that's how he was able to describe so many species, up to 5,000 plus species of plants. Yan. So, he believes that these are and these have always been separate species. And we have tackled that in the history diba, of systematics. And now, Charles Darwin comes along and he looks naman at species as these units of evolution. Kung saan, uh, dun nangyayari ang evolution. Okay? And so, he emphasized that a lot of species can be produced because of the conditions present in the environment. Okay, so these conditions determine um, which species will be the fittest and will um, make progeny, diba? So that is your natural selection. So in the absence of these conditions, these changing conditions, Arion Kai, Dar Kai Charles Darwin the species might remain the same or remain unchanged throughout time. Okay? But I would like to ask you, diba? personally, ano ba sayo ang species? Yeah. So, today we're going to look at different concepts of what a species is. So, we will look at four. Okay, we have the morphological species concept, the biological species concept, the evolutionary species concept, and the phylogenetic species concept. So, for these modern species concept, of course, what your concept of a species is will influence how you approach a certain taxonomical study, okay? So, it affects now your process of uh, studying a certain group, okay? So, to uh, approach this certain concept, okay, we look at different classification uh, relations first. You have your phonetics, and your, your phonetic and your phylogenetic. So, these are um, the types of relations that we could look at while we try to determine our concept of what a species is. So, for phonetic, this is uh, applied to a classification system which relies on just the similarities between these present uh, organisms, okay? So like what we did before, the yung short activity natin, we just look at the present species and then try to decide, okay, is it related or not? Okay, so we look at morphology, cytology, yung biochemistry niya, okay, yung actual na anatomy niya. So yun lang, wala siyang regard of its past. Di naman natin tinignan, di ba, kung ano yung descent niya, ano yung ancestry niya. So that is phonetic. Now, we also have another type, which is the phylogenetic. So, this naman 
this type of relationship describes yung ancestry, yung pathways of ancestry, and how these characters of these organisms arose in evolution, okay? Regardless of how it looks like now, okay? So, this is important because yung pag uh, yung pagtatalakay natin ng species concept is important because when we call an organism a species, that means that it has the properties that is associated with our concept of a species. Diba? So, we look now first at the morphological species concept. So, the morphological species concept says, states, that a species is a community or a number of related communities whose distinctive morphological characters are, in the opinion of a competent systematist, sufficiently definite to entitle it or them to a specific name. Andami. Pero what does it actually mean? So sabi niya, in summary, you call it a species kapag these individuals look similar to one another. Okay? So this looks at the smallest group that have these individual members that look consistently similar to each other. Consistently in that, yung offspring niya, ganun pa rin yung itsura niya. Okay? And it is persistent, okay? Or after so long, ganun at ganun pa rin. Okay? And you can distinguish them by ordinary means or average means. So that means, pagkita mo pa lang sa kanila, ah, isang species to. Okay? So, just by gross uh, examination or gross morphology or gross observation, masasabi mo na na ah, isang species to. Okay? So again, these morphological characters entitle them to become a specific name. Okay? That is what Reagan is actually talking about here. Now, this also entails several problems. Diba? One is, pinaka-importante, these morphological characteristics are of course subjective. Diba? Katulad nung naging activity natin. Okay? So, subjective siya. Paano yung epipremnum aureum na magkakaiba yung varieties? Diba? They are just one species, but they look different. Okay? Another is, there are morphologically indistinguishable species or sympatric. Okay? These uh, species are sympatric but are different lineages. So, what is it talking about? What is this um, slide talking about? Yung, lalo na yung sa sympatric. So, when we say sympatric species, these are those species that occur in the same geographical area. So, dahil same sila ng nararanasan at dahil walang geographical separation, minsan, nagiging magkahawig sila. Okay? So, let's look at some examples of this. I'm sure you're very curious to know talaga dahil same yung geographic conditions. Okay. So, let's try to look at it. So here we have the African African elephant and Asian elephant. So could you try to uh, point out what the differences are? Ayan, may mga nakikita na ako, diba? So this one has specific differences, okay? Pero sa unang tingin, aakalain mo din sila na magkapareho, diba? Ayan, so... First ay yung trunk tip nila. Ayan, di ba? So, meron siyang, ang African elephant, meron siyang parang dalawang fingers. Ang cute. So, this is for grasping. Okay? But, for the other one, for the Asian elephant, it only has one finger. 
Okay? Yeah, so that's just one. So al- marami pa. Okay? So it is so much different pala. Sobrang layo niya dito sa Asian elephant, itong African elephant, di ba? Loxodonta, yung kanyang genus, yung African elephant, while your Asian elephant is actually elephas. So, ang layo. Pero sa unang tingin, aakalain mo na, ah, related sila. Let's proceed to the next example. So, let's look at this, di ba? Magkaibang magkaiba yung itsura nila. Yung kulay pa lang, yung height pa lang, ibang iba na. But they are of the same species. Okay? So, parang din yung epipremnum aureum natin. Or your neon pothos, your enjoy pothos. Ayan. And then another one, another problem is the issue of mimicry. So, lalong nakocomplicate. Okay? Ayan. So, we also um, did this, di ba? We tried to classify din a uh, Mullerian type of mimicry. Okay, so dun sa short activity natin, if you remember, we looked at Mullerian type of mimicry. In fact, there are two types of mimicry. You have your Bichan and your Mullerian. Now, this Bichan mimicry, ito yung... Uh, Minimimik niya yung poisonous organism para ma-save yung sarili niya from predators. For your mullerian, for the frogs that we had, both silang poisonous. Okay? Pareho silang poisonous and they reinforce yung distaste or yung warning signals sa predators. Yan, para maalala natin. Okay. So for the Bichan, you have here your uh, monarch and your viceroy. Ayan. So yung monarch butterfly natin, siya yung nagmimimik sa ating viceroy. So yung viceroy, siya talaga yung poisonous. So di ba, talagang magkaparehong magkapareho yung mga itsura nila. Ayan. So another one, is our Mullerian frogs. Okay, so ito naman yung Mullerian mimicry, di ba? Kung naaalala nyo na tinignan natin yung R imitator at yung R variabilis. Okay? And talagang magkahawig na magkahawig sila, pero magkaiba pala sila ng specific epithet. Okay? But now you try to compare your R imitators from different geographical locations and magkaibang magkaiba yung itsura nila. But, they have the same specific epithet pala. So, mimicry is another complication of your morphological species concept. So, ibig sabihin ba, hindi na sila same species? Okay? Kapag magkapareho sila? Ah, pag magkaiba sila ng itsura? Okay? Yan. So we go now to the next species concept and that is your biological species concept. So dito naman, sabi ni Mayer, a species is a group of actually or potentially interbreeding individuals who are reproductively isolated from other such groups. So take note of that term, reproductive isolated. Okay? Here in biological species concept, we look at the issue of reproductive continuity. What does that mean? It means that a set of individuals who reproduce to new individuals that are similar to themselves, yun yung uh, magkaparehong species. Okay? So my constant uh, or my continuation ng reproductive line. Okay? So, my succession ngayon. Okay? So, again, a species for their biological species concept are those that can reproduce. Okay? And are incapable. So, hindi sila makakapag-mate or makakapag-breed with those na hindi nila kauri. Okay? So, yun yung biological species uh, concept natin. But, 
uh, it also poses this question. So, kung ito yung biological species natin, ibig sabihin, all other concepts of species are non-biological ba? Okay, yun yung pinos na um, parang idea ni Mayer ngayon. Okay? But, like the morphological species concept, meron ding um, problems itong biological species concept natin. And we'll try, we'll try to look into them. Okay? So, these are the different problems associated with your biological species concept. Testing on museum specimens and fossils. Testing for interbreeding under natural conditions. Reproductive isolation is often incomplete and there are asexual organisms. So, first, okay, yung sa museums, okay, and specimens, uh, the biological species concept, kung mapapansin nyo, it lacks this lineage perspective, okay? It is just, kung ano lang yung present, yung present moment. So, it is non-dimensional. Yun yung parang naging term. Pangalawa, testing for interbreeding under natural conditions. So, paano kapag hindi na-achieve ang reproductive isolation? Like, for example, in the marine environment, you have different fishes there that interbreed. So, kung may nangyaring new species from that, is that does that mean na hindi na natin siya i-consider na species? How can we achieve reproductive isolation sa ganito, sa ganitong environment, sa marine environment, di ba? So kung ganun, then those species that arise from these different fishes, ibig sabihin ba hindi sila species dahil nang galing siya sa Hindi species, di ba? Kasi hindi nagkaroon ng reproductive isolation. Nagkaroon ng interbreeding in that natural condition. Now, for reproductive isolation naman, we have, uh, for reproductive isolation that is incomplete, we have this concept on hybridization, okay? Now, this is very common in the many groups, okay? And hybridization is defined as your reproduction between the members of genetically distinct populations. So, at the genetic level, magkaibang magkaiba sila. Pero, nagkaroon ng interbreeding ng reproduction between them. And they produce now offspring with mixed ancestry. Okay? Okay. And then, we also have the uh, asexual organism. So, now, an example of that is... One of this is your liger. So, unahin natin yung liger. Let's look at an example of interbreeding. Okay? Now, in, uh, in, nat in a natural setting, copulation or sex acts to ensure that these organisms ca that can interbreed have the same genome Okay, they have the same anatomy and this is consistent throughout time. Okay, the closer these two organisms are, okay, the closer they're related to each other, of course, the easier they can reach each other for reproduction. Okay, the easier you can reach each other as potential mates kasi magkapareho kayo ng biological clock. Okay, so meron tong uh, compatibility, your reproductive compatibility. Okay, and this helps in adaptation as well. So in natural conditions, you have your lions and your tigers, right? Your lions, these are they are located in your grasslands and they are cooperative hunters. So they occur in packs, di ba? Kaya nga dun sa Lion King, maramihan sila. But your tigers, mag-isa silang nagahunt, okay? They are woodland, okay? Diba kung, kung titignan nyo yung jungle book? They occur in woodlands, okay? And they are individual hunters. Hindi mo sila makikita na nag a okay, ng prey na maraming kasama, okay? 
Even yung genitalia nila, syempre, magkaiba din ng structures yan, yung tigers and your lions. But, in captivity, they were seen to be able to interbreed, forming now your ligers. Ayan, so, nagkaroon ng interbreeding. So, ibig bang sabihin yan? Ang liger, hindi na siya species, di ba? And you have the other one, the horizontal gene transfer. This is also known as your lateral gene transfer. So, ito, it is a non-sexual movement of genetic information okay, between genomes. Okay? So, itong figure na nakikita natin, kung titignan natin, diba, uh, it's, it's actually very easy. It just looks complicated. If we look at it closely, you have different circles there with different colors. So this different colored this each colored circle represents a specific uh, microbe that exists in consortium or sama-sama sila sa isang community for for instance you have your soil so sama-sama ngayon yung mga uh, microbes na yan okay and there occurs among them your horizontal gene transfer na Nira represent nung maraming arrows na yon, okay? So to better understand this, we look at this one, okay? So these are the steps involved in your horizontal gene transfer. First, the DNA occurring in your environment is taken up by a certain organism. And then, through its pilus or pili, it transfers it now to the other or to an, uh, another and adjacent, okay, take note, dapat magkatabi sila, na organism. And this, in turn, help that organism to express kung ano man yung gene na nakuha nila, okay? So, a very important example of your horizontal gene transfer is the presence of antibiotic resistance okay so ang nangyayari ngayon kapag nag take ka ng gamot tapos hindi mo kinompleto yung pagte niya sabi ng doktor one week pero nung napansin mo ay hindi naman na ako inuubo itigil ko na third day pa lang ang mangyayari diyan merong part ng population na maka build ng resistance hindi sila namatay so meron na silang antibiotic resistance resistant gene ngayon now through conjugation ililipat nila yon sa katabi nila so yung katabi nila meron na ding antibiotic resistant na gene okay and now it becomes um, resistant to your for example antibiotics na ginamit penicillin ayan so Ganon, at pasa-pasa siya. So, lalo na tuloy, tataasan ng doktor mo yung dosage or iibahin niya yung type ng antibiotics for you. So, yan yung mechanism ng horizontal gene transfer. And these organisms are asexual organisms, di ba? Yan. So, non-sexual yung way nila of reproducing that gene okay how are we to claim that new species can arise from these entities if they are not species originally diba kasi ang tinitingnan lang ng biological species concept ay dapat uh, they are reproductively isolated okay they only have they can only breed with each other now we go to the next species concept here we look at the evolutionary species concept ngayon sa evolutionary species concept a species is a species if it evolves separately from others and it has its own unitary evolutionary role and tendencies. Yun daw ang nagde-define sa isang species. 
Now let's try to look at this more. So, dito, an evolutionary species is an entity daw of organisms, comprised of organisms that maintains its identity from other entities through time. Okay? So, magda-diverge siya. And it has its own independent evolutionary fate and historical tendencies. So, only when uh, processes, some, some processes like your reproductive isolation or your ecological adaptation, that persist over a long, long time. Okay? Now, this evolutionary species concept also, ayon kay Wiley, okay, it is a single lineage of ancestor-descendant populations of organisms which maintains its identity from other such lineages, so both in space and time, which has its own evolutionary tendencies and historical fate, as I have said kanina. So this evolutionary species concept actually solves the hybridization problem of your biological species concept, di ba? Kasi it allows hybridization, okay? It allows this interbreeding, and it still calls that species a species as long as hindi siya masyadong lumayo, okay? It does not affect the evolutionary trajectory, okay? So, okay lang na magkaroon ng um, occasional na hybridization as long as hindi siya masyadong lumayo okay, dun sa pinanggalingan niyang species it also solves clones, okay, or clonal lineages, we have um, clonal species so this clonal species hindi sila uh, nag-e-exchange ng DNA, di ba kapag kaya nga meron tayong um, sexual reproduction so that there is an exchange okay of DNA. So, dito, sa ating clonal species, we have one of your examples are your sea grasses. So, dito, uh, parang vegetative, hindi parang, pero vegetative uh, reproduction lang, ang continuous na nangyayari. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, kung vegetative reproduction lang, low yung genetic diversity. At kahit na ganun, considered pa rin siyang ibang species kasi meron siyang sariling uh, evolutionary path okay or evolutionary history so bakit uh, same yung or low yung genetic diversity niya kasi vegetative lang yung reproduction niya ibig sabihin for example um, sa isang plant pag pinutol mo siya may mga plants na kahit pinutol mo siya pag pag nilagay mo siya sa soil or sa water tutubo ulit siya as another plant. So, that is vegetative reproduction. Hindi sila uh, nag-exchange ng DNA. Walang nangyari na fertilization. Okay? Walang, hindi napunta yung pollen ng isang ganito dun sa other reproductive uh, organ ng other plant. Okay? So, walang nangyaring ganun. So, that means low yung genetic uh, diversity nila at vegetative lang yung process of reproduction okay so again your evolutionary species concept accepts a uh, clonal species pero just like the other one or the other two we still have problems involving your evolutionary species concept why because evolutionary independence is arbitrary so to understand this more okay so, ayan. So, let's look at this example, which we will also uh, use as an application later. So, dito, diba? We have your, let's focus on the species tree. Ngayon, dito, magkakaibang species, si C, B, at A, dahil nag-diverge si C from that E point, diba? At si B at si A ay magkaiba dahil nag-diverge sila sa D point, Okay? sa point D. But, when we look at its gene tree, hala, napakadami pala nila. We have uh, your point 15, your point 16, your point 20, 
So that means magkakaiba din sila. Which where are we going to use? Aling point of divergence ngayon ang gagamitin natin to delineate these species, di ba? So that's what it means when we say that that evolutionary history or evolutionary independence, I should say, is arbitrary. Okay? Ayan. So I hope this is very clear now that evolutionary independence is actually arbitrary. So, depende sa yung kung aling point of divergence yung titignan mo, di ba? So, now this brings us to the next one, which is your phylogenetic species concept. So, our phylogenetic species concept says that the smallest diagnosable monophyletic group of population of populations within which there is a parental pattern of ancestry and descent ang iko-consider natin na species. So, here, members share derived characters and treated as evidence of descent. Okay? So, ang daming, medyo madaming unknown terms or unclear terms. So, let's try to define them. Okay? So, first, let's look at your monophyletic group. Ayan. So, let's look at what we mean by a monophyletic group. Now, a monophyletic taxon is a group that is composed of this collection of organisms that includes all the descendants, that includes all the descendants, and its most recent ancestor. So, a monophyletic taxon is also called a clade. Now, let's try to look at, these, uh, at this figure now. Okay, so, dun sa green, itong highlighted by green, it is a clade. Why? Because yung end points niya sa taas, okay, yung forks, yung end ng forks, that represents all the descendants. And then, yung pinakadulo, di ba, the node here, that represents naman yung most recent ancestor. The blue one is also a clade, kahit na iisa lang siya. Bakit? Kasi it includes its most recent ancestor and the descendants. All the descendants, which is iisa lang. Now, the other two at the bottom, yung orange at yung red, hindi siya clade. Dahil, separate. Okay? Hindi na include yung ancestor nung tatlong species for the red one. Okay? The other one is not a clade because it does not include all the descendants. Diba? Ang Ang criteria natin ay dapat all the descendants ay eh, hindi naman included. Merong isang uh, part ng fork or ng tree na hindi na include. Okay? So, the green and the blue, they are clades or they are a monophyletic taxon. The evidences for your phylogenetic species concept is in the form of characters. Okay? These are features that can be attributed to a certain group. Okay? So, your characters now, they can be morphological, behavioral, and biochemical. Okay? So, that means na yung uh, shared and derived characters from your ancestor to the descendants, these are the characters that are included, and also yung novel and unique characters ng mga descendants. Okay? Pero... Yung ancestral states, okay, of this character, okay, they are of no use sa ating phylogenetic species concept. Only those that are shared and only that which is exhibited by your recent, uh, your recent descendants, okay? Let's look at the problem now with our phylogenetic species concept. So, one of the main problems are what characters should I use? Okay? So, we have this example of a clade. Okay? So, this is a clade that represents your vertebrates. Now, which characters should I use? Okay? Kasi, sinasabi ng phylogenetic species concept, for example, you have your amniotic egg. 
Ibig sabihin, kung ito yung gagamitin kong defining characters, iisang species ngayon ang turtle at ang leopard, di ba? Pero kung gagamitin ko yung hair as the defining characteristic, naiiba ngayon ang leopard sa turtle. So, very arbitrary na naman ang gagamitin natin, di ba? So, for four walking legs, ala, ibig sabihin, iisang species lang ang ating salamander, turtle, and leopard. Ganun ba yun? Diba? So, very arbitrary. Another one is the problem with our gene trees and our species trees. So, another problem with your uh, phylogenetic species concept is distinguishing between gene trees and species trees. So, what is this gene tree and species tree? So, ito siya. Yan. So, here in our species tree, di ba? Meron lang tayong C, B, at A species. But, when we tried to look into their genes, ayan. So, gene trees differ from your species trees in that it reflects the process of replication okay at a local level ibig sabihin within this population for example ang na-replicate lang ay itong certain protein coding gene na to so for species 12 for example meron siyang kinocode yung gene niya nagco-code ng specific protein that is different from species 11 so nagkakaroon ng different different types of genes and different copies and these copies of these different types of genes are now passed on from parent to offspring that creates different variations now and different branching points in that gene tree okay so basically yung gene tree natin it tries to define yung mga point mutations okay and when we try to reconcile this now, ang dami, ang daming varieties ng ating species C. Diba? Ganon din ang B at A. Okay? So, ganon yon. Nagkakaroon ngayon ng problema. Okay? Kasi, alin ba yung gagamitin nating gene type? Diba? Alin ba yung gagamitin natin to define yung species. So again, there is this arbitrariness of your character. What character you're going to use. So, if we try to compare your phylogenetic species concept with your evolutionary species concept, while your evolutionary species concept is concerned with that specific speciation event, kung kailan nag-diverge, okay? Yung ating phylogenetic species concept naman, it is concerned with the characters to use, okay? Which characters define a certain species, okay? In that evolutionary line, okay? So, yun yung major nilang difference. Now, what then should we use among these concepts? Alin ba yung tama? Yan. So, that's my cat. Hajime. <laughs> Yan. And so, what is the best way para i-define ngayon ang isang species? So, here, pluralism is the key. Okay? So, pluralism is a term used in philosophy. Okay? And it looks at the doctrine of multiplicity. Okay? So, dito... Pluralism is a position wherein walang tamang, walang nag-iisang truth. Okay? There exists different truths and we can uh, consider them. Okay? So there is not one truth. Instead, there are many. Okay? So, how does this apply now to how we look at species? So, when uh, a species concept 
it can be favored in only a given condition. Okay? Pero, it does not mean that, that this is already universally applicable. So, for this condition, for example, ito yung species concept na pwede nating i-apply, pero hindi naman siya universally applicable. For example, ang biological species concept, pwede natin siyang gamitin kapag uh, we have organisms that are sexually breeding and from the same location, di ba? So dito, pwedeng yung biological species concept ang gamitin natin. Okay? So, finally, okay, to sum it all up, the process naman of species identification in itself is not simplified. Okay? It cannot be simplified by simply having this notion or this meaning or the right meaning of species. Okay? It may not be possible to identify species in many cases, but it is clearer why species can be so difficult to identify, diba? This is what these species concepts are showing us, okay? So, this pluralistic uh, view, this pluralism, is now uh, reflected by our polyphasic taxonomy. So, what does it mean when we say polyphasic taxonomy? We have to look at our species and gene tree na naman. Okay? So, uh, sa, uh, sa polyphasic taxonomy, it considers species tree, gene tree, your biochemical tree. So, all these trees that are constructed and tries to reconcile them into one tree. So, yun yung polyphasic na taxonomy. Titignan niya lahat ng possible na trees, na clades, and then it reconciles all of these. Okay? So, yun yung naging bunga ng pluralism na approach sa pagtingin sa isang species. Okay? Now, during our course in biosystematics we will encounter different species types and i leave this to you guys so those that are in bold yung chrono species polytypic species vicariant species cryptic species lazarus species and endemic species i leave it to you to try and define them okay madali lang naman you just try to search these terms on the internet yeah and so we also have the others like your cosmopolitan species, relic species, sister species, ayan, and dami pa. These will be defined as we go along the course. Ayan. So, again, binabalik ko yung tanong na, what is a species? Okay? What defines a species? And kayo na ang bahalang sumagot. So that ends the first part of our lecture, Species Concept. Okay? Let us now look at Let us now look at the next part of our lecture, which is towards speciation. So here again, we are going to look at reproductive isolation mechanisms, okay? So at the end of this lecture, you should be able to identify the different reproductive isolating mechanisms, give examples of each of these mechanisms, and associate the reproductive isolating mechanism to species concept and speciation, okay? So, what are these reproductive isolating mechanisms ba? So, di ba, katulad ng paulit-ulit nating pinag-uusapan, species actually come about as a result of gradual change that is prompted by natural selection, di ba? Now, 
Since environments are not continuously changing paiba-iba yan through time, then of course we can expect that species now can differ from place to place. Therefore, natural selection favors different characteristics in different situations. And now the accumulation of these differences yields now to different species. Okay? So, for example, dito sa malamig, yung mga malalaking types ng organisms ang nafe-favor. So, in these species, within these species, there are different genetic changes dahil nga sa sexual reproduction or this exchange of DNA. Now, dahil doon, dahil sa natural selection ngayon na prevalent sa lahat ng members ng species na to, nagkakaroon ng selection pa rin. Okay? So, these genetic changes that come about due to natural selection, these changes can spread towards the members of that species, okay? To these individuals as members of that species. But of course, it does not necessarily translate in the members of a different species. Siyempre, dahil itong certain na organism na to, for example, nakakarana siya ng ganitong specific conditions, magkakaroon siya ng changes ngayon, pero not necessarily na ganun din yung reaction ng ibang species. This is because individuals of a certain species share now a common gene pool. Okay, so halos pare-pareho sila ng genes na hindi um, katulad sa ibang species. Okay? They have different evolving gene pools. Okay? First of all, ano nga ba talaga itong i- ibig nating sabihin when we say genes? So, your genes, ito yung parts ng DNA natin na na-express. Okay? Ito yung makikita natin kaagad yung resulta kapag na-replicate siya. Okay? So, ito yung na-express na parts ng ating DNA. Yun yung gene. Okay? So, this gene pool na na-express, yung mga genes na na-express sa certain individual species, hindi naman natin makikita, uh, hindi siya katulad sa mga na-express din ng other species. So, yun lang yung uh, gusto niyang i-imply. Different species have different gene pools that are evolving through time. Since the process is gradual now, there is no particular point at which it is possible to say that the two populations have become two different species ngayon. Kasi yung process na yun ay gradual. So, be- before these changes can begin to accum- accumulate in any population or in any group of species, it must be isolated from other populations of the same species. So, central now to the concept of speciation are these various mechanisms that separate populations from each other. Kaya natin pag-uusapan yung towards speciation. Okay? So, here are the various mechanisms by which populations can be separated from one another. Okay? Now, among sexual organisms, individuals that are able to interbreed belong to the same species. So, the biological properties of organisms that prevent that prevent interbreeding are now called your reproductive isolating mechanisms. So, biological dapat siya. Okay? Biological properties of these organisms that prevent interbreeding. Okay? Now, we have two categories of reproductive isolating mechanisms. We have your prezygotic and your postzygotic isolating mechanisms. For your prezygotic mechanisms, these are the ones that take effect before fertilization. From the term prezygotic, bago magkaroon ng zygote. Your postzygotic these are the ones that take effect after a zygote has been formed. Okay? So let's first look into prezygotic mechanisms. 
So these prezygotic mechanisms, they are the ones that prevent mating from occurring. They are also the ones that prevent gametes from forming a zygote. So these include different forms okay, or different types. The different types of your prezygotic reproductive isolating mechanisms may be temporal, ethological or behavioral, mechanical, and gametic isolation. So, let's look at these different types now. First, we have your temporal, prezygotic mechanism. So, in temporal isolation, the organisms are isolated biologically by time. So, this may mean that they breed at different times of the day, at different seasons, or at different years. So, what does that mean? We have here different examples. So, we have here your Rana boilii and your Rana aurora. Your Rana boilii breeds from the months of March to April, while your Rana aurora breeds from the months of January to March naman. Okay, so, ibig sabihin, biologically, hindi nag hindi nag-overlap yung kanilang breeding times. So, that becomes a mechanism, a reproductive isolating mechanism. Another one that we can cite for this temporal isolation ay meron tayong um, tinatawag na orchid species na dendrobium. Okay? So, ito, so, this dem dendrobium na genus, genus, it flowers for a single day. Okay? They, their flowers open at dawn and then they wither at nightfall. So, within this genus, same yung stimulus na nag act Pero, merong lapses between yung reaction time nung different species within this genus, okay? So, hindi posible na magkaroon ng fertilization among these species or your interspecific fertilization. It is very much impossible kasi magkakaiba yung time na nag open yung kanilang flowers, okay? So, eto din yung um, kung, kung sa tao, <laughs> ayan, Meron tayo mga nocturnal at saka yung mga day people, di ba? So, hindi sila nagkakatagpo kasi iba yung times na gising sila. So, nagkakaroon ngayon ng reproductive isolating mechanism which is your temporal. So, medyo ganun yung uh, analogy natin kung sa tao, di ba? Another type of our prezygotic mechanism is your habitat isolation. So, take note, same yung geographic area dito. Pero, iba lang yung habitats nila. Magkaiba lang sila ng habitats. So, one example of this is your snake. So, meron yung aquatic type ng thumbnophis and meron yung terrestrial type ng Thumbnophis. So, kumbaga, you have your earth benders and your water benders, diba? So, ito, dahil nga magkaiba sila, kahit na sa iisang geographic location lang sila, pero magkaiba nga sila ng habitat, you have your terrestrial and aquatic, hindi sila nagkakaroon ng interbreeding, okay? Hindi sila nagkakaroon ng interbreeding ngayon. Ito yung pinagtagpo, pero hindi tinadhana. <laughs> Ito naman yung pinaka masaklap, yung behavioral isolation. Ito, there, there is the presence of different courtship rituals or little or no sexual attraction between males and females. Ayan. So, ito talaga yung epitome ng walang spark, okay? Sexual attraction between males and females may be weak or absent. Okay? So, sa mga species, 
lalo na sa animals, okay? The members of the female and the male sex must first search for each other and come together. Now, when they have come together, this involves complex courtship rituals that take place and with the male usually taking that initiative and then the female will respond, okay? So, this in turn produces copulation na. So, after that courtship, intense courtship, okay, nagkakaroon naman ngayon ng copulation. So, itong courtship na to, it's also important for the females para makita nila kung viable ba siyang mate, okay? So, with copulation now, uh, dun na nagkakaroon ng uh, progeny, okay? There are a lot of elaborate rituals that are specific to a species and this plays a significant part in species recognition. I remember one of my students asking, paano yung uh, Mullerian frogs? Paano yung R imitator? Paano niya nalalaman na hindi pala si R variabilis yung uh, imimate niya? Kasi magkaparehong magkapareho sila. And this is the answer to that. Diba? Uh, we have different reproductive isolating mechanisms in place. Okay? And this behavioral uh, type of prezygotic mechanism, reproductive isolating mechanism, is the most potent okay, that keeps animal species from interbreeding. Okay? Sobrang potent niya. It can um, affect strongly, okay? Even uh, among closely related species. Okay? So, bakit? Kasi species recognition during courtship happens and this involves different stimuli. It may be olfactory or your chemical, it may be visual, it may be auditory pa, or it even may be tactile. Okay? So, here comes na din yung topic on pheromones. Okay? So, these are substances and these play a critical role in recognition between the members of a species. Okay? So, these have been identified in insects, ganyan, like your ants, your moths, your butterflies, beetles, yan, even the songs of birds, frogs, ayan. So, all of this um, contribute to species recognition signals, okay? Yan. So, next one, we have now your mechanical isolation. So, dito naman sa mechanical isolation, we look at the structural differences in genitalia or flowers that prevent copulation or pollen transfer. So, when we have this incompatible shape and size of genitalia, of course, copulation is already impossible. Diba? Now, you may ask, Paano kaya dun sa mga pollinators? ba we have pollinators like your bees, eh kung saan-saan naman sila dumadapo na types ng flowers, bakit hindi tayo nagkakaroon ng hybrids? Kasi, even when pollinators uh, visit flowers of other species, ganyan, pollination cannot occur because the pollen cannot come into contact with the style of the alternative species. I'm not talking about the style of the species, but the style as in the female structure. Okay? That bears your stigma. And this one uh, receives your pollen. Okay? So, dahil magkaiba yung uh, structure ng kanilang stamen and style, hindi nga yun nagkakaroon ng fertilization even if your pollinators go from one flower to another diba? so i would like you to look at this ayan as an example again okay so for your animals diba look at that the giraffe is trying to mate with your donkey pero hindi nga possible kasi meron tayong mechanical isolation wherein iba yung structure ng genitalia nila so, it is an epic fail. Now, we are uh, into our last type of isolation. We have your gametic 
isolation. So, I would like you to remember this, okay? Uh, here in gametic isolation, the sperms cannot fertilize the eggs, okay? This is very prominent in the aquatic environment or in our marine environment. So I would like you to remember this, that when you take a swim, you are essentially swimming <laughs> in eggs and sperm discharged into the water. Diba? Kasi syempre, marine animals, they discharge their sperm and their egg into the water. And this is where fertilization takes place. So when you try to take a swim, you are essentially swimming in gametes. Okay? So even if that is the case, the gametes of different species fail to attract one another because yun nga, yung sperm, hindi niya na-fertilize yung egg ng another species na yun. Okay? So for example, we have your... Uh, sea urchins. So, our sea urchins, they can be induced to release egg and sperm simultaneously. Sabay. Kahit sabay silang mag-release ng egg at sperm, kahit induce natin na sabay silang mag-release ng sperm, yung magkaka-species pa rin ang na-fertilize. Okay? So, the same species pa rin yung hahanapin nila. So, in animals, with internal fertilization naman, yung sperm cell, hindi niya nagagampanan or hindi siya makapag-function sa sexual ducts ng females ng different species. So, in, the, in plants naman, this is exhibited by the pollen grains of one species that fail to germinate on the stigma of another species. Ayan. So, hindi na reach uh, nung pollen tubes, yung ovary, where fertilization occurs. So, even in plants, they also have ovaries. Okay? Ayan. So, that ends our pre-zygotic, okay? Pre-zygotic reproductive isolating mechanisms or the mechanisms that prevent zygotes from forming. Okay? Now, we head over to our post-zygotic mechanisms. Ayan. So, for our post-zygotic mechanisms, again, it prevents hybrid zygotes. So, nagkaroon na ng hybridization. But it prevents your hybrid zygotes from developing into viable fertile adults. Ayan. So, post-zygotic mechanisms prevents hybrid zygotes from developing into viable fertile adults. So, please disregard... Um, the other definition it shouldn't be this okay so this this uh second definition preventing gametes from forming a zygote is actually your prezygotic mechanism diba? as we all already have talked about earlier now under your postzygotic mechanisms we have one reduced hybrid viability so here, hybrid zygotes fail to develop or fail to reach sexual maturity. So, take note of that term, sexual maturity. Kasi kapag sexually mature, dun ka lang makakapag-produce ng young, ng offspring. And that is very important for the continuity of your lineage. So, dito, well, there are times that prezygotic mechanisms are absent or they break down. And so, nagkakaroon ng uh, interspecific zygotes. Okay, so uh, nagkakaroon ng fertilization between different species, kaya interspecific. Okay, and the fertilized eggs are actually formed. Pero, these hybrid embryos fail to develop into maturity. Okay, one example here is your sheep and goats. So, even if there are hybrid embryos of your sheep and goats, these die in early developmental stages. Okay? So, nagkakaroon ngayon ng hindi viable. Okay? Ayan. So, uh, this is also seen in plants. So, what happens in plants, nagkakaroon sila ng hybrid seeds, but they do not germinate. 
Okay? So, wala din lang point, di ba? Hindi lang nagde-develop. Ayan. So, another one of that uh, post-zygotic mechanism is your reduced hybrid fertility. Dito naman, hybrids fail to produce functional gametes. Now, what happens here? Yung mule natin, which is from your female horse and your male donkey, yes, as you can see here, it's healthy, di ba? It's alive and well, but sadly, it is sterile. So, hindi rin lang siya makakapag-fertilize ng kapwa niyang mule. So, walang nangyayari. Hindi din lang nagkakaroon ng reproductive continuity or hindi din lang na itutuloy yung lineage nila. Another, in your post-zygotic mechanism, is ayan, your hybrid breakdown. Okay? So, the first generation is very much viable, it's very much fertile, but then, the offspring of these hybrids are actually reduced in viability and fertility. And as you can see here in that figure, yung nasa gitna, siya yung offspring ng hybrids. So, as you can see, it's very sparse, di ba? Ang liit niya. So, it's very weak as well. So, hindi na siya, hindi na niya kaya magbigay ng progenies. Okay? Ayan. So, very, it's already evening. <laughs> Ayan. Kaya, talagang madilim na yung um, kwarto natin ngayon. So, that is your hybrid breakdown. So, ito yung tatlong post-zygotic mechanisms naman. So, to summarize all of these um, modes, okay, diba? So, the splitting uh, starts when gene flow is somehow interrupted between these two populations. So, now it is necessary that this gene flow is interrupted because otherwise your two individual species would still share a common gene pool okay and they will become they cannot become genetically different diba so kailangan maputol siya kailangan magkaroon ng mechanisms that uh, separate them biologically okay so through these mechanisms through this reproductive isolation, uh, the two gene pools can no longer adapt in concert. Okay? Can, can no longer adapt together. Yan. However, if these prezygotic mechanisms of reproductive isolation break down, so magkakaroon pa rin ng zygote, these hybrid individuals can be inhibited uh, these hybrid individuals that carry these genes from combined gene pools can still experience reduced viability or for fertility through your post-zygotic mechanisms of reproductive isolation. So, these are mechanisms that will lead us toward now speciation okay so the speciation topic i will leave that to my colleagues and that is it for today ayan so thank you everyone it's already evening and that is it so i hope you learned a lot for any clarifications and any questions just key it in to our slido event and so Thank you everyone and have a safe day. Bye!